You might have heard that you don't have to be good at maths to be a good game dev or graphics programmer, or programmer in general. Well, I believe that's a total nonsense. While you don't have to be an expert at mathematics, you must be aware of certain maths functions and know how to use them in certain situations. One such function that I believe you should know is called arctangent. I'll demystify it for you and by the end of the video, it might open up new creative doors for your shaders and game dev journeys. My goal is to help you understand the concept intuitively so you don't have to memorize everything. Alright, you can call me the Guijay and let's dive right into the topic. Before we talk about arctangent, we need to know what is tangent. For that, let's revise your trigonometry knowledge. Now, now, don't give me that look. I promise I won't make it traditional boring lecture. Let me plot a right angle triangle. And right angle triangle is basically a triangle which has the largest angle of 90 degrees. The longest side or the side opposite to the 90 degrees angle is called hypotenuse. Now let's say I have this angle theta. The side opposite of this angle is called opposite side, sometimes also referred to as perpendicular. And the side adjacent to the angle is called adjacent side, also referred to as base. But I will stick to opposite and adjacent. Now tangent of this angle theta, tan theta is just the ratio of the length of opposite side divided by adjacent side. Technically it is opposite upon hypotenuse divided by adjacent upon hypotenuse, but hypotenuse cancels out. Now let's say this angle theta is 32 degrees. Opposite side's length is 5 units and adjacent side's length is 8 units. Obviously, I've taken some liberty and rounded off these values for the simplicity. Now tangent of 32 degrees is just the ratio of 5 divided by 8. So the tangent of 32 degrees is 0 0.625. Meaning if I were to feed 32 as input for the tangent function, I will get 0 0.625. Arctangent is just the inverse of the tangent. Meaning, if I were to take this 0 0.625 and feed it into the arctangent function, I will get 32 as output. Basically, I will get the angle. Most programming languages have this function as a tan like this, which will take single input, which will be the ratio of opposite side divided by adjacent side and give the results back. Many programming languages offer an overloaded version of the a tan, which will take two inputs. First input being the length of opposite side, and second being the length of adjacent side. If the language does not have the overload, then it will most likely be defined as a 10 2 like in HLSL. And this function is more intuitive to use. Let's say for our triangle, I use the a 10 and feed 5 and 8 as inputs, I will get this angle of 32 degrees. But if I were to flip the order of inputs around, I will get this angle of 58 degrees instead. Because now I'm basically telling the arctangent function that this is the opposite side and this is the adjacent side. One important thing to note is, a tan function will return the angle in radians and its range will be from minus pi to pi. But obviously, this is all just a theory. A game math theory. Alright, I know this joke is getting old and I'll probably still... <clears throat> borrowed it from the amazing brackies, but I simply cannot help it. Anyways, I was telling that this is still all theoretical knowledge. In my opinion, knowledge is only valuable if you know how to apply it effectively. So allow me to explain why I think this is an important function in game dev and shaders. Well, that's because in games and shaders, we deal with vectors a lot in form of position and direction. Let me just show you. Let's say I have this position P in 2D space. If I were to imagine a vector on the graph, it would look something like this. This distance will be position dot x and this distance will be position dot y. And just like that, I have a right angle triangle. So if I were to use a tan with p dot y and p dot x, I will have the angle between my vector and the horizontal x axis. And if I were to use the a tan function with p dot x and p dot y, I will get the angle between my vector and the vertical axis y. In shaders, I extensively use arctangent to calculate polar coordinates y component based on the Cartesian coordinates or uv's. I also use it to distort my circular SDF shapes. For games, let's say I'm making an Angry Bird type game 
or even a pocket tank type game. And I have a shooting velocity vector that follows my mouse pointer. Based on that vector, I can get the rotation angle for my tank cannon using arc tangent. You could also use it to find the angle between two vectors as well. So arc tangent is pretty handy. Now up to this point, if the video was easier to understand, hit that like button. It really supports the channel and helps others discover the content. Subscribe if you haven't already and keep on grinding shaders until we meet again.